Welcome back to the Goose and Ghost Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and this is episode 6 of my podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been working on in the last two weeks and in this episode it is all knits. We have some potential crochet coming up in the future but all that I have to talk about that I have worked on is all knits. So I actually don't have a lot of things to show today. I've been fairly monogamous on the projects that I have been working on, so there's only one new project to show you, and it was something that I talked about casting on in my last episode, um, in my acquisitions segment, but we just got a lot of, uh, a lot of whips, not really a lot. I only have three whips today to show you, and that's it. Um, I guess, and then I figured since I have so few things to show you, we might as well do like a little future project planning segment at the end um, because I also don't have any acquisitions today. So it's l literally just the three whips. So we'll we'll talk about my plans for the fall and winter. And I do have a nice list of things that I want to get done by the end of the year. So hopefully I can get through that list and we'll, we'll see how things go. But we'll start with the Magnolia socks, which are coming out in one week on the 28th. These are, this looks really impressive, right? This is my sock design. It's a vanilla sock. Just kidding. The back features this super fun little cable pattern. And of course, if you want, you can put the cable pattern down the front. I feel like at some point I will absolutely make another sample to throw in the pictures of the cable pattern down the front, but I wrote it with the cable pattern on the heel side. I love this. It's different. I thought it would be fun. I really wanted to see how it turned turn out. Um, I love this yarn too. This is the softest yarn that I have knit socks with uh, thus far. This is Nick, Knit Picks Capretta, which is a, I don't know the percentages, but I know that it's a merino wool cashmere nylon blend. And it's, it's really soft. And this is the color Tansy Heather. It's just this really beautiful, soft gold, soft pumpkin-y gold kind of color. And then the toe is in Stroll. It's just a, uh, a scrap that I have, like I have like this much left. So these are coming out in one week. I will post a little, I think they're called shorts on here, not reels or just the little short videos um, when it comes out and I will have a coupon code when they come out as well for 15% off. And if you want to stay up to date on my releases, then go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I am at gooseandghost underscore knits right here. Um, and I post all of my, my designs and projects I'm working on over there. So I highly recommend to give me a follow. And if you're not on Instagram, I will post, I do post everything that I can on Ravelry. Um, sometimes I work on projects that aren't on Ravelry or I'm designing things that won't be on Ravelry until the project is released. In which case you can find out about them here on the podcast, but these will be coming out. Oh, do you like my bag? These will be coming out in one week. Um, my mother-in-law made this bag for me. Oh, I also wanted to say thank you to everybody who left super, super sweet, kind comments on my last video and all of the congratulations on my engagement to my fiance. And thank you. I am absolutely over the moon. I am so excited. Um, I'll talk about it more in the personal life 
segment at the end, but we have started wedding planning. Um, so, shall we move on to what I'm wearing? Let's start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing the 2021 Stephen West Mystery Knit Along, tw not Twist and Turns, that's 2022. This is Shawlography. This is my Shawlography. Figured I'd wear it today because we're going to talk about MCAL today as well. So, this is mine. Um, I love my color palette so much. So I've got, let's see if I can remember all of these off the top of my head. The white is Knit Picks Stroll Bare Glitter. Um, you can't really, I don't think it'll show up very well on camera, but it does have sparkle all throughout the white. The light green here is Sorella Hitchhiking Ghosts. The dusty pink is Madeline Tosh Copper Pink, Pink Light, something like that. Um, the dark green, dark green, is nitpick stroll pine forest heather for I think forest heather sounds right and the brown is the fiber co cumbria in barrow and then down here at the bottom I deviated I hated the edging I thought it was so ugly um, so of course mine rolls up, but I deviated and I did something else, which I have the detailed instructions for on my Ravelry project page, which I will link down below. So I don't wear this very often because it is a lot. It is a lot of a shawl. It is a very busy shawl. Um, but I thought that this would be a good day to wear it because we're going to talk twists and turns for the last time. Shall we talk about that now? Um, I will let you know when I start showing spoilers, but uh, Clue 3 came out yesterday and I have barely started on Clue 2, so there's not a whole lot of spoilers to share. Um, that said, if you want to skip forward, I don't blame you. I will put up a timestamp right before I start showing you things. So, like I said, this is the last time that I'm going to be showing my twists and turns because I've decided I'm not going to work on it anymore. Uh, it didn't bring me any joy through clues one and two. And actually, it just kind of, shall I say, pissed me off, made me grumpy. I wasn't having fun. So, I mean, we all know how frustrating Clue 1 was. Clue 2 started, and the first technique right off the bat is one of the techniques that gives me wrist pain the most. And as I kept watching the tutorial video, it kept popping up. And as I watched the Clue 3 video yesterday, it was still there. So I decided for my own sanity and for the sake of my wrists, I'm not gonna do it anymore. It's not worth it for me to knit something that is gonna cause me pain. So I'll show you my last update and then I'm probably gonna frog it. So timestamp here for when I'm done talking about it. But again, there's not that much to show. So we have got my finished clue one which did turn out absolutely beautiful i really like how these turned out it looks really cool it was the biggest biggest pain in the ass to work on i got so frustrated working on the cast ons and cast offs and um i actually was recording a vlog of my experience working on it and most of that footage won't come to light because I'm stopping on it but I will put in some clips here of um, 
modifications that I was making along the way to make it easier for me. Um, and then just when things got more frustrating and bad for me, I was like, this isn't worth it for me. So um, I will, I'll put in that clip too of when I decided that this wasn't worth it. So then move over here. Here's how far I got on Pluto before I said that this wasn't, this wasn't it for me. So the orangey kind of color here, this was the twisted rib sections and the twisted rib is what hurts my wrists, especially twisted rib flat. I can't do it. So it's not, there's so much of it that keeps going on. It's not worth it for me. So I'm sure this is going to turn out beautiful. I'm really intrigued by clue three. Um, I watched the whole video yesterday because I still feel like I want to be included, um, even if I'm not going to be knitting it. So I watched the whole video as background noise while I was working on uh, something else, and it, I'm very intrigued by the construction and how things are going to go. But yeah, this is as far as I got. And now I'm going to frog it. So. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my yarn because I really like this color combination together. If anybody has a suggestion for a fingering weight garment or shawl that takes two skeins of each color, um, I'm all ears. I would love to hear it. I would love to hear it. I would love suggestions because I really wanna work these two up together. And I can't get any more of the dark green because it wasn't oopsie from Sorella. I can get more of the icy Tiffany blue mint green color. Um, but that's not usually my color palette. So I will insert the clips here of the, from the vlog that I was filming so that they don't all go to waste. Okay. So this is where I'm at. Obviously, I'm not ready for clue two yet. Um, I did go ahead and read ahead in the pattern, finish watching the video, and I did see that all of the loopies do get braided up. And I did the first little bit on the first one because I really wanted to see what it looked like. And I think it looks really cool. I'm really liking it so far. So this is how far along I am. I've done, I put on my uh, fangirl fibers. Hello, Goofy, are you there? I put on my fangirl fibers, Goofy. I don't know why I have the worst problems with trying to get focus on um, my video, but Fangirl Fibers Halloween Goofy Stitch Marker. Oh, I zoom out and then you can see. Okay, cool. Um, and this is how much I've done today, just sitting here. So I've done, um, I've just finished the second contrast color stripe for today and about to go do a main color stripe. And we're supposed to do this pattern until we have 14 contrast color stripes and I am at two, four, six, eight contrast color stripes. So I need to do six more and then the last little bit of the last main color stripe and the eye cord bind off. So I have quite a bit left to do still. I'm really hoping that um, I can get to 10 tonight. I think I totally can, but if I can get to 12, um, I'm going to be able to set myself up pretty good for success tomorrow when um, I have a little bit more time to knit. So I got off work today and I had to do a whole bunch of chores and um, like household stuff and life stuff, but tomorrow the only chore that I really need to do is laundry. So that leaves me with a whole lot of downtime. So I'm hoping I can get clue two done tomorrow. Um, 
But this is the only update I'm gonna give tonight. I will check back in tomorrow afternoon after I get off work and show you how much I'll get I get done. Um, I can put another stitch marker here into sh so I can really show you how far I got um, past goofy here. Oh, also, I did change something about the pattern. Um, I was getting really annoyed with the cable cast on. Like it was, it was really kind of bringing the whole pattern down for me. So I just decided to switch it to a backwards loop cast on and obviously it's worked just fine for stretchiness and what we need for this. And it's making it go a lot faster and it's making me enjoy it so much more. So I'm gonna keep doing that for the rest of the shawl. And morning but last night I finally finished clue one yes that's from the bottom it's easier to hold it that way without it flopping over but clue one is done finally so should we do a little overview on my thoughts Overall, the effect, super cool. This looks awesome. Was it a pain in the behind to get there? Yes, very much so. Huge pain. I got so sick of binding off and casting on. So sick. But seeing it worked up in these chunky knit stitches, which I think I ended up making twisted knit stitches. Whatever, I don't think it makes that big of a deal, but it looks so cool. And my colors, I'm very happy with my colors. So I'm very fatigued from this clue. I'm really hoping that clue two isn't as much work. I'm already seeing people post spoilers from Clue 2 because it's now Saturday morning at 8.30 Pacific Time. So I'm hoping that that means that Clue 2 isn't that bad. I know that there's, I, I started reading it last night and then as I was scrolling down there was pictures so I closed out of the pattern. Um, so I'm hoping that, I, I'm, what am I saying? I know that there's four sections and it starts on the outside edges over here and it goes out. So I'm excited to see where it goes from there. I'm excited to see if we do anything with these free hanging loopies at some point, these ones at the very bottom, because um, I just wanna make sure that they're secure. And like all of these ones up here feel secure, and I don't feel like this is really gonna go anywhere, but I don't want to lose it. And it, it just looks like this, because it's just looped through. So, so I started clue two. And it's going great. Like it's it's working out pretty quick. Um, we did some 
some garter short rows. So, you know, like I've moved away from my garter project to work on more garter. And I'm now finally working with my accent color, which is this, the mohair from Hobby. I'm not gonna focus because I can never get anything to focus. Maybe I should sit down someday and try and figure out this camera. And it's not gonna show up well because I'm using mohair. But Stephen West has activated my flight or fight response. And uh, after one, ray, uh, one row of it, we're gonna go with flight for now. Twisted rib. I don't like twisted rib. I especially don't like twisted rib flat, but it really hurts my wrists. So I'm debating how much twisted rib is actually going to be worth it if I should just do ribbing. I'm not sure because of the mohair. And it's going to be worked in with uh, a merino nylon striped in. So I don't know. And worked two rows with my accent color with my mohair, and I'm excited to see it worked in. Like, it looks cool. You can't see any of the stitch definition at all because, again, mohair on a really loose gauge. I'm using a US 7 needle. But. Yeah, I don't want to work on it now because of the twisted rib, so I'm going to go work on something else. I have other things I need to do today. Um, I'm not that worried about finishing this project on time, but I have a new project that I need to go cast on for a new design that I need to release soon. <laughs> so I should probably go work on that. So, thanks Steven. I really appreciate the twisted rib. Of all things, like it's such a simple little barely annoying thing, but it hurts my wrist so bad, so all right, moving on. Welcome back. And welcome back to everybody who uh didn't want to watch my my uh, not shallography, uh twists and turns, spoilers. We will move on now to the next whip that I have, my phone is blowing up. I'm getting so many text messages. And for what? My mom wants interior design ideas from me. That's for what. Um, okay, so we'll move on to my next work in progress, which is my Cleolum card cardigan. And I actually made a good amount of progress my goal, let's say it out loud right now, my goal is by the next podcast to have it done. And I can do that. I can absolutely do that. It won't be ready for testing by the next podcast, but it will be a complete sample. So, since my last podcast, I have got a finished body. So... Here's, here's the body and the back and it's all seamed together down the sides and at the top, the body is all together. Uh, where's my marker? From the last podcast, I knit from here to the top and then did all the seaming in the sides started this little nubby bit of the first sleeve. I started it right here. So the whole body of the cardigan is going to be in, um, it's, it's in garter stitch, but I'm going to do the sleeves and stockinette. So I'm going to move my stitch marker from the body to right here on the sleeve. So, you guys, hold me to it. This needs to be done by the next podcast. 
two weeks, this has to be done. I gotta finish it. This has been going on for way too long. I'm really excited to have it, so. Hopefully, I can finish, finish it and start grading it by the time the next podcast comes out. Um, and I need to start looking for a tech editor because I've, I've explained this before, but if you're new around here, I've never designed a garment before. I normally stick to um, accessories, but I need somebody to check my math and make sure I'm doing things right, especially on the sleeves. I'm really nervous about the grading on the sleeves, the body, I think I'll be able to do just fine. But I am very nervous about the grading for the sleeves. So, um, soon. Soon, and this will be done. And you can see the inside there, how cute. I still am procrastinating on sewing in all those ends. Incredible. So, soon it will be done and I can move on with the other garment idea that I have, but I, I'm gonna wait for that one. I need a little bit more experience with one of the techniques that I want to use for my next sweater design, but that's fine. I don't have to do it right away. I have no deadlines. I'm literally just designing things because I want to see, I want to wear them. So if other people want to wear them too, that's fun. That's great. Um, and then, yeah, speaking of designs, designing things that I want in my wardrobe or things that I want to make, um, my last whip is also one of those. So, this is, I have no name for this yet, but this is a new design. I cast it on yesterday. Um, it's a little bit smushed up and there's not a lot to show for it. But I talked about this in my acquisitions in my last episode. This is an advent wrap or a scraps or mini skeins. And it looks like this so far. Really impressive, huh? And who am I thinking that it's a good idea to design something in black yarn? Idiot. So, not much to show. It's just going to be a long asymmetrical wrap um, with some color work designs. And I don't know if you can tell. Oh, you can totally tell. These are two different skeins, so I am once again designing something with intarsia. And I uh, messed up on how big the balls for each section, and I have so many tangles. I need to get through the section so I can chop some of my, my extra balls down to little, little guys like this. So if you are embarking on intarsia for the first time, do not use Full balls of yarn. Break your balls up into little guys like this. Um, it makes your life so much easier and so much more enjoyable. So hopefully by the next episode I'll have a good amount of progress on that too because I mean those are my Cleland cardigan and my advent wrap are the only two projects I have going on right now I have another one that I am going to start working on but um, the advent calendar for this is from fangirl fibers this is from last October it is the haunted mansion set this one is what I'm showing you room for a thousand it's not gonna uh, focus but really pretty really super pretty so and it's 31 mini games so I think I'm going to 
we'll see how I, design, I end up designing it, but I'm gonna make it accessible that if you have a 24 skein set, mini skein set, that you can adapt it easily for that. Um, or if you have a bunch of scraps, you can adapt it easily for that too. I'm also gonna try and see if I can adapt it for different yarn weights, but I'm also trying to have this ready to go by American Thanksgiving, which is November 24th. Um, which is about a month away. So we'll see, we'll see what I can get done with that. So, yay. So yeah, we're 20 minutes in and well, at least 20 minutes of me recording. I'm gonna add in some extra clips, but that's all that I have for projects right now. I knew that this was gonna be a quick episode. So, I mean, let's talk about my future project plans to talk about project planning for fall and winter 2022 through the end of 2022. Um, this might not necessarily be everything that I make through the end of the year. I might add some projects on. Um, I haven't planned for anything past Christmas, so I probably will cast something on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve um, and just work on it through the end of the year. Um, last year I cast on a pair of socks that were Christmas colors and I've been saving them all year so once Christmas time starts I have a fresh pair of hand knit socks that I can start wearing. Um, but let's talk about all of the projects that I, ha I want and need to cast on coming up soon. So. I'll put up a screenshot right here. Um, and I will consult my my notes here. But these are all the projects that I want to get done by the end of the year. Or by Christmas. And you can see that there's one here that's crossed out. Stay tuned. Um, they'll be coming out mm, December. I don't, I don't know when in December because it's a collaboration with somebody else and she's setting the release date, but stay tuned. Thanks. Okay. So let's go down the list. We'll start with a muscle burrow. I've never made one before, but I want to jump on the hype train. But you guys remember how much I've been complaining about how much I'm so bored with just stocking it? Well, <laughs> what can I do? So this is actually going to be a Christmas gift for my fiance, for Colin. Um, and this is the yarn that I picked up for it. This is, the lighting's a little bit off right now because I've got my really warm, overhead lights behind me and my window is the camera's propped up on my windowsill so there's a lot of contrasting the really blue gray from the gloomy outside and the really warm yellow inside so the lighting is a little bit funky but it is a very like dusty blue gray showing us kind of purple on camera it's definitely not purple um, but this is yarn from Serial Knitters Underground um, on their Wild Skug base in the color Mystic Blue. Um, there's no... Oh, ethically sourced 100% superwash merino. I love that she puts on there ethically sourced. That's really exciting. Um, and she is a local dyer uh, from the Seattle area. She actually used to have a yarn shop over on the east side of Lake Washington, east side of Lake Washington. Um, but she decided to close it, I think right before the pandemic, to just focus on dyeing. She does a great job. So I'm gonna make a muscle burrow for Colin in this. And this is his favorite color. He loves dusty navy blues. 
and I really I made him a hat a couple years ago for Christmas and um, put up another picture of it here I don't remember what it's called but it is by Tin Can Knits and so I really wanted to make him another hat of something that he can wear fishing because he goes fishing often so I figured a muscle burrow would be perfect um, just cover his ears <clears throat> So then next up on my list, I have this little guy here that says um, socks for dad. I really wanted to make socks for my dad for Christmas last year. Oh, I cut open my finger. How did I manage that? When did I manage that? I didn't even feel it. Weird. Um, I wanted to make socks for my dad for Christmas last year. I ended up running out of time. I already made socks for my mom for Christmas this year, so it, I gotta make my dad a pair. So I pulled this out of stash. I think this is what I'm gonna use for my dad's socks. This is Yarnaceous Fibers. Very pretty. Um, it is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards per 100 grams, and the color is called Mommy's Very Angry, which is a reference to a quote in, I think Jurassic Park 2? I may be wrong. I think it's 2. It's been a while since I've seen uh, any of the Jurassic Park movies that isn't episode, episode 1 number one which is my favorite um but just pretty like dusty grays and purples with like this little hint of this pop of red right in here um but just very neutral and then i'll do a fun pop of color for the toe um, next up on here, I have a Magnolia Bloom, which is by Camilla Vad, and I want to make this as my Christmas sweater this year. And I thought that this is a worsted weight sweater. I'm pretty sure it goes pretty quick. Like everybody I've talked to about it has said, you can do it. Like don't sweat it. You can keep that on your list. It goes so quick. And I want it for my Christmas sweater because this is the yarn that I have for it. And I think together these two is just gonna create like the most beautiful, like dusty maroon, not dusty, like muted maroon, beautiful color. So the this is Wool of the Andes Worsted in Merlot Heather. This is definitely showing up way darker on camera than it is in real life and this is knitting for olive soft silk mohair and the color claret there we go beautiful so i'm really excited about these two together i think that'll show up like really cool against my skin tone with um, that pretty lace pattern around and as this Christmas sweater, I think it'll be so pretty. I'm really excited for it. So that'll be great. Um, next up, it says Advent socks and I don't have the yarn for it, for it yet, um, but that is gonna be my Advent calendar for this year. I ordered um, an, a self-striping skein from Freckled Whimsy. It's not here yet. It's not supposed to be here for another couple weeks, but that's okay. Um, but it's just gonna be like four, five rows a day on a pair of socks. That's easily achievable. So that can get done by Christmas. And my goal is to like do the toe and after I thought heels on Christmas day. Sounds good. Next up we have um, it says, that hat for Colleen. 
And this has been on my list for a while. My aunt sent me a text last winter saying, hey, can you knit me a hat? And I said, yeah, sure. And then I forgot about it. <laughs> so I need to finish, I need to start the hat for her. And I'm pulling it up right now. I have the yarn, okay. I'm going to knit her the whore frost hat right here in this, which is just um, recycled from another sweater that I used to have that got some tears in it, so I just ripped all of the yarn out of it. It's not a hand, it's a commercially knit sweater, so this is what it looks like knit up. It's just a marled white and tan, so it gets this kind of oatmeal-y color. That's all she requested was an oatmeal hat. So I thought that this would be perfect. And really, I can knit a hat in like a day or two. Even when it has these fun little bobbles and patterns and stuff on it. Um, next, I have stocking. So last Christmas, I was the first Christmas that Colin and I lived together by ourselves. We used to live together at his parents' house, um, but last October we moved in together just ourselves, so we needed, you know, everything. Um, and last Christmas I made him a stocking, and then I ran out of time to make one for myself. So. And this is the color palette. This is all Knit Picks palette. Um, I think the green is called Grass, the red is Garnet Heather, and the tan is Almond. And I will put up a picture here of Colin's uh, stocking. And he is, he loves his truck like a lot. That is his first baby is his truck. So of course I made his with a truck and I'm going to do this one for myself because um, my stocking at my parents' house has a rocking horse on it and my stocking at my grandparents' house has a teddy bear on it. So it's like, yeah, of course I'm going to keep that going. That's very sentimental to me. That's perfect. Then the last project that I have on here that I haven't cast on yet is bridal party bags. So obviously soon I have to do um, bridesmaid proposals. And I say bridal party because I'm having a mixed gender party. Uh, gonna consist of two girls, my brother, and a non-binary pal. So we're going on bridal party for whatever for the the general term so i have to do the proposals to my buddies and i figured um i have ideas of what i want to put all together for them but i wanted to put the all of the items in a bag and so i figured you know like the granny crochet granny square crochet tote bags are super popular right now and i'm really enjoying making granny squares um in my free time and I have this which is a huge skein of Brava 500 from Knit Picks and this is the color that the bridesmaids dresses will be in and this beautiful emerald green um, so I figured that'd be perfect so I have to make four of those Hopefully before Christmas. I think that's when I'm trying to ask them is around Christmas time because that's when my sister lives all the way across the country. That's when she'll be home. So that way you won't have to mail anything to her. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's all the projects that I want to get done before Christmas. Some of them are pretty small. Some of them are a little more time consuming, but I think... And then the, the two more that are on there are projects that I've already started that need to get done. So the advent shawl 
and the Cleolum cardigan. Both need to get done soon. So that's my plans for till Christmas. And now that I'm saying all of that out loud, that seems like a short list, but I just got an offer today from my job um, to move from part-time to full-time. So that's going to take up some more time. And it'll be great for pay, but it gets rid of all my knitting time. So, yeah, that's all I've got in terms of plans. So, yeah. Um, I do have other sweaters that I really want to make so that if I end up getting through that whole list and I have some more time, I had a whole make nine that I had planned for the year and my whole make nine was sweaters. And as of today, I'm actually pretty proud of this. I did pretty good for my make nine. I can scroll back far enough to find my make nine. As of today, I have finished one, two, three, four, five, five of the nine sweaters. So I, and then the Magnolia Bloom is another one of those. So that leaves only three that need to get done. I have half of the yarn for two of them and all of the yarn for one more of them. So. I don't know which one I want to do yet, but I, I don't, I'm not going to plan for that because I don't know if I'm going to have time for it. Um, so we'll see, we'll see, but yeah. So for life stuff, um, I said that we have started wedding planning. We have figured out our date. We're looking at January 2024, um, our budget, all of those fun numbers that I am having so much anxiety looking at. Um, we have, we figured out who we want in both of our bridal parties. I've put together a mood board of all the colors and aesthetics that I want. And on Tuesday, we're going to go visit our favorite venue and we've both been in love with this venue since before we were engaged. Um, so we're really excited that they have our dates available. Um, yeah, I've started looking up a bunch of DIYs to do for the wedding. I'm trying, I, I keep looking up shawl patterns to do I really want to knit myself something for the wedding, but I don't know what. Um, like I said, it's going to be in January, so it's going to be cold outside. And our venue isn't completely inside, but we're going to go take pictures outside. So I want to make myself something to like wrap myself up in during those times when we do go outside to take pictures, because I generally am a cold person. like. I run cold and January in Seattle, the dates that I looked up, I looked, or the date that we're hoping for, I looked up the historical, oh hi, Colin came in, he wanted to see how my day has been going, um, and then he saw that I was talking to camera and he was just like, what the heck, and he left, so, um, anyways, I looked up the historical temperatures of the date that we're hoping for and it's usually about 45 degrees which isn't super cold but if I'm outside in a sleeveless dress or like spaghetti straps or v-neck with nothing on my arms basically which the dresses that I'm looking at have nothing on my arms I'm gonna have a bad time I'm gonna complain and Colin's not going to enjoy it. So if I, ha if I have a shawl that I can put around my arms like this while we're outside and like get some cute pictures with, I wanna make something special. So 
If you have any suggestions of something beautiful but not completely lace, leave them down below. I would love to see. I'm hoping for like a fingering weight. I don't want to do a completely lace weight shawl because I do want a little bit of warmth. Um, so fingering or sport weight shawl. And I mean, of course, you can adapt anything. The other option is too that I can just design myself one, but I'm not sure if I'm... I'm going to see if I can find somebody else's idea first and, and use somebody else's pattern first. And then if that has been exhausted, then I'll see if I can, if I feel like designing my own. So we'll see. Um, there's a lot of time until then, but I want to get started on things. So I've been looking things up now and I'm really excited. So I'm looking things up now and I can't wait. So what's going on in the next two weeks Halloween I love Halloween that's coming up um, we're going to see the venue on Tuesday my aunt's birthday is next weekend so this will be the first time that I get to see my extended family since we got engaged so that'll be really exciting to go see all my aunties and tell them all about what we've got planned and what's going on um, and that'll be really great. I have a really big family, so I can't wait. Um, yeah, for the most part, we're finally starting to calm down. Our busy, 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 busy schedules are going back to normal. And we've got, like, our, our schedule is just work, make dinner, chill out, knit, play video games. We're back to back to life, which is really exciting. I'm really happy about that. So that's all I've got for today. Um, don't forget that next Friday, the Magnolia socks are coming out. These will be released next Friday. It's October 28th and there will be a discount code for them. I will be selling them on both Ravelry and Etsy. Um, and I can't wait to share them with you. And that's all I've got for, for this week. So I hope you guys all have a really good week, a really good two weeks until I see you again. And yeah, make sure to give this comment, or this comment make sure to give this video a like subscribe to this channel and leave a comment down below if you have a suggestion for a shawl for my wedding um, if you think that I can knit all of those projects by the end of the year and tell me tell me what you're gonna be for Halloween or what your kids are gonna be for Halloween or if you're doing anything exciting for Halloween I want to hear I don't know what I'm doing yet in um, the last three years, I've been Elsa, but that costume I've gained a little bit of weight and it does not fit me anymore. So I don't know what I'm gonna be. I'm trying to convince Colin that we need to be Bob and Linda from Bob's Burgers, and he's not going for it. He's not a costume person figured that would be an easy costume for him but we'll see I'll get him into one yet <laughs> so I hope you guys all have a really good two weeks and I will see you in the next video bye